so I am going to today, hopefully, my belt shows up in time, and second, hopefully, if I don't uh, just make a huge hash of it, show you how to change the belt on one of these little bell and howl. This one's a 256 before they did like the 256B and EX, so I guess that makes it a 256A, but they didn't call them that yet. Um, this should be pretty similar from what I can tell to most of the 200 ones and potentially some others as well. I noticed there weren't any, I couldn't find any videos on YouTube or anywhere um, that talked about this, so I'm going to do it and hopefully goes well. Why am I changing the belt? Well, most of the belts on these kind of things need to be changed, honestly. By the time you're buying them, they're old and they're stretched out. On this one, I'll show you in a second, it's running film well, but slowly, like probably about 80% speed. So not terrible, but everything, everything kind of looks like it's underwater. Good news is it's like registering well, the picture looks good. It's not like eating film unless I do something dumb. Pro tip, don't mess with the framer knob while it's moving, at least not much because uh, it actually moves the uh, pull down claw up and down and so it's kind of moving the whole time and it did it, it did bad but okay so first things first on these guys to get the uh the cover off i've already done most of that because i was looking at it earlier it's these little um three sixteenths hex you know they're screws but they've got a hex like you know socket head instead of a regular screwdriver head um so to get the back cover off it's these four kind of around the top and then there are two more on the bottom that you have to look out for. Um, I think a lot of people probably miss those because they're on the bottom. Always look at the bottom, it's very important. Once the belt comes in, I'll kind of show you how I'm going to do the rest of it. But in the meantime, let me thread up some film real quick and kind of show you what I'm talking about with the uh, going slow thing that may help you diagnose something. Um, so. If you've never threaded one of these little guys before, um, this particular one's an auto threader and it seems to work pretty well. I know some of them are a little janky, but um, this guy's not too bad. Basically, you turn the motor on, it starts running, flip it up into forward, you push down on this little loop former, and you let the film run through until it shoots out here, and then kind of just let it run for a second needs to go underneath the second loop. You got these two rollers. I'm gonna turn it off so I can do stuff. And then you can be sloppier about this, but it just kind of makes me feel good to fuck up and drop it. You can't see what I'm doing. Why am I even doing this? Once you got that kind of slotted in, which again, you can't see, roll it forward. And now it's going. And you can turn the lamp on. All right, so I'm trying to do this in the middle of the day, so you can't see anything. So I focused it kind of on my hand here. And it's a little hard to tell if the, when the people run across. This is just some family film we bought from somebody else on eBay. So it's weird and voyeuristic. You know, there's that like kind of underwater thing going on. So that's what we're trying to fix. It's not too bad, but it could be a lot better. So stay tuned for the belt. The other thing that's wrong with it is it won't run in reverse, so I just gotta let this whole reel run. But while it's doing that, it's kind of cool to work on the inside. Very easy whole like shutter cam assembly. Those are some wheels. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is cool. Now these two wheels are like the forward and reverse drive. Um, Here's the actual drive belt that we'll be replacing. Um, yeah, kind of neat. Probably don't see that every day. Maybe you do, I don't know. Okay, so the belt is here. Uh, it's the next day. The belt has arrived. Um, so, like I said before, I've already got the stuff off. Let me get my tools. Um, I'm going for this very close up thing so you can kind of see the projector better, hopefully. So, Belt's over here. There's the old one. Hopefully the new one is the right size. We'll find out in a minute. Um, 
So what we're going to do, this piece here just pops right off. Um, and we're going to go through the fan is what I think is going to work best. So I'm going to take these four screws off and that'll let the center piece separate from everything over here. And the only, once you do that, the only thing really keeping it together is the drive belt. So we'll probably cut that um, and then feed the new one in there. So give me just a second. Let me grab my tools and get going. Okay, so we got the little 3 sixteenths. And that is going to be these guys. Actually, I'll pop these off. Pull those down. Make sure the projector is unplugged before you do this. I shouldn't have to tell you that. If I do have to tell you that, you probably shouldn't be doing this, but now you know, so maybe you can. Okay, so we got the rest of the screws off, and as you can see, this is now pretty much only held on by the belt itself. Bring this a little closer. The, see the whole thing is just pretty loosey-goosey. So we got the new belt here. We're not hurting that, hopefully. Let's cut the old belt off. Not very elegant, but I don't care. Okay, that actually looks really good. Let me show you. So you can see the new belt is just about a little bit smaller than the old one, which is exactly what you want. So this just kind of moves about. So that, um, this space here is why we have to take this part, this whole thing apart, because the belt needs to go past that. And so what we're going to do is feed it through the fan housing onto the spindle and then over the um, drive wheels there. So hopefully that will be relatively easy. Famous last words. So, so how we're doing this, got the belt, and we're going to get kind of hooked on one of these fan blades and just sort of spin the fan all the way around until it's just on the spindle. Should be able to turn this around this way. Which hopefully you can kind of see. Grab it over here. Yep, look at that. Oh, it's like I know what I'm doing. Almost. There we go. This. Yeah, son of a bitch. Okay, cool. As hopefully you can see, the new belt is happily on there. So, let me um, screw everything back together and we'll see if I did it right. Just looking at it, it looks a lot tighter like it feels substantially tighter than the other one did and that's generally a good sign when you're dealing with belts so next stop step rather is to um is to thread it up and see if it solved the problem okay so that honestly went a lot easier than i expected which is pretty cool it usually doesn't happen um i hope you enjoyed watching this home movie that we bought on eBay um, of people we don't know. This is cinematic excellence right here. All right, so I somehow forgot to record the hit record on demonstrating that I fixed the problem. Um, it's early the next morning. My wife's still asleep, so I figured instead of the eBay movie, we can watch a dirty movie from the 50s. Starring Arlene Hunter in The Gold Digger. Oh no, you're missing the show. As you can see, she is digging for gold. But yeah, the motion looks much better now. It's running at the right speed. Um, and it seems like it's basically a happy projector. Almost as happy as Arlene digging for gold. 
Look at, look at her go. Just using the hell out of that pick. You know, someone's got to do it. Not a lot of information on this particular role. You know, I'm not sure what the director is going for. You know, what kind of like cinematic vision was being expressed. Yeah, this didn't have a commentary track. It's actually a silent movie. So you get me instead. This is my favorite part because she looks like she's really confused as to what just happened. Like, oh no, how did that get there? I was trying to pan for gold. And so is the cameraman. And she said, nope, 